What's going on guys? It is Filmington and we're going to be doing a PSA reveal, but first, um, there are a few things going on, not this weekend, but the weekend afterwards. That's Friday, July 31st, Saturday, August 1st, and Sunday, August 2nd. Uh, Mike, Baseball Collector, and Pat Geek, and Ty, Breaker Culture, they're part of um, Bench Clear Media and they're putting on a Hobby Palooza. It's going to be all different content creators that are going live for an hour at a time. Bunch of collaborations, all different sorts of content. So check that out. The website's in the description. And I'm going to be part of that and going live on, I believe, Saturday, August 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So super excited about that. Um, that should be a good time. Also, uh, my friend Jeff Wilson from Sports Card Investor, he's putting on a virtual sports card con. Haven't looked into that too much. I'm not um, part of that, but um, that is something I'm also looking forward to for that weekend. Uh, I mean, we can take, we have to take what we can get, right? We're watching games with fake crowd noise and cardboard cutouts in the stands. So, you know, I, I <laughs> beggars can't be choosers at this point, right? All right, so first of all, uh, before I get into this PSA reveal, um, oh, by the way, in one of my next videos, I'm gonna be opening up these, I got, Mega Boxes 2018, Luis Robert. Oh my God, his hobby is absolute nuts right now. So try to hit some of those, maybe pull a Robert. Be cool if I hit a, a base chrome um, or a Mojo. That'd be pretty sweet. Or even a paper um, first Luis Robert with a Dasani bottle. That'd be pretty sweet. And I'd probably sell those if I got them. Um, but yeah, that's the next video probably. So yeah, before the PSA reveal, um, SJC, Peter Steinberg, the, um, the president of the company, he posted a note to the website today, probably the social media outlets of SGC as well. And, um, and he was very uh, regretful to announce that they're gonna be changing their service levels. Um, they have been able to scale four times, uh, but I'm guessing that the volumes are probably closer to 10 times, maybe 20 times. I'm guessing that whatever f forecast models they had um, were a little off in, um, in predicting the amount of volumes that they were gonna get. Um, because especially with PSA's impromptu ultra modern price increase, I think that really drowned SGC. And right when that happened, I was like, ooh, you know, too big, too fast. Um, you know, it helped, I think, that they moved into a different facility, but they weren't able to keep up. Now, did they have to do this? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I was thinking that they would perhaps keep the service levels, alter them a little bit, and then potentially increase prices. But what this tells me is they were completely overwhelmed, drowning with the new business. They couldn't handle it. So they're taking an approach kind of like PSA in that, you know, um, we don't, <laughs> we can't do this. We can't do 20 business days. We can't even do 40 business days. Um, SGC Peter Steinberg said on uh, podcasts in the past that they don't want the turnaround time to just be a number for them like it is for the other guys. So I think that's why um, that pride was why they were adamant in just removing the turnaround time. So now instead of the 20 business days, which is really more like 50 business days, um, they're taking that off the table completely and they're replacing it with a service level that is, I can wait. Um, keeping the price the same at about 10 bucks. And they're really taking away a lot of the other service levels, I believe. And next, I, I think, unless I misinterpreted the article, uh, you're looking at paying $100 or more to get something potentially within one to five business days, I believe, uh, which I think is unfortunate. Um, for me and for other people submitting to SGC, I think they're now going to rethink going forward which company they're gonna submit their cards to. With me, it was I was probably aiming for like, I don't know, 50% SGC, 40% PSA, 10% Beckett. Now it might be more like 60% PSA, 30% SGC, 10% Beckett. I mean, we'll see. Um, a lot of things can change as this, uh, this year has shown us. It's very fluid, but um, uh, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little annoyed because one of the reasons why I liked SGC was, and I pumped this in a lot of my videos, was you have to think about opportunity cost, cost of capital, annualized return. Basically, time is a variable. The quicker you get your cards back, the faster you're able to sell those. That's 
a huge benefit. Then you're able to take that money and reinvest it so much quicker. Um, and now the, the benefit with SGC is really in the slightly lower cost of submitting, you know, and, and helped with PSAs increase with ultra modern, just ultra modern 2017 plus, you know, looking at a few dollars more per card um, versus SGC. So, and it's only a few dollars more. So when I think about how is this gonna impact the market, I think of two different things and they're different, but they are probably a little bit related. First of all, I think of total market share. SGC has gained a ton, tremendous, they've done a tremendous job over the last six months. Now, based on what I was just saying, how I'm thinking about already rethinking where I'm gonna send my cards to, I think a lot of other people are gonna go through the same, have the same conundrum basically. And I think it's ultimately going to hurt and I think SGC knows this, the amount of um, economy bulk submission type cards they're gonna be getting of the modern era usually. Um, and I think that is going to, in a way, hurt their resale value on the secondary market because people aren't as familiar, used to, um, maybe they don't prefer, it's not their number one choice. Uh, with with the SJC slab, they'd rather go with PSA. Uh, so, and they were already fighting an uphill battle with Modern uh, with regards to resale value. And there was already a, a pretty substantial gap between an SGC 10 and a PSA 10, probably an SGC 9 versus PSA 9. They fared pretty well from what I saw against Beckett uh, from a nine and a half perspective. But a lot of that could have been potentially confusion with the grade, the 9.5 is really mint plus. With Beckett, it's uh, gem mint, although you could argue, you know, the three nine and a half subgrades from Beckett and one nine, like, is that really gem mint? A lot of people don't really consider it truly gem mint. Um, hence, true gem mint, which is four nine and a halves for subgrades. But, um, so at first I'm thinking like resale value, uh, it's not, it might not be great for them, this whole service level change. But then I also thought maybe the reason why PSA 10 sell for such a premium is because people are building in sort of that like, I don't know if it's illiquidity or it's just more difficult to get a PSA 10 because it takes so long to get or it costs a little bit more to get um, with PSA. And as a result, and with a lot of people submitting to, to SGC, you know, there's going to be fewer tens out there, so that could potentially put a little bit of a premium on tens, and people never realize that. But maybe PSA taking between six to ten months to get back in an economy order, maybe that's actually helping secondary market value because they're keeping that supply a bit lower. And again, you know, you're working a little bit harder to get those tens. Whereas if I was to break open a jumbo box of 2020 Top Series One, send all those cards to PSA, pay between, or now it's about $12 a card and get those back in, you know, 45 business days. If it was really 45 business days, would I really be able to get that same return if everybody was able to do that same thing at the same time? I don't know. So again, two things I'm thinking about. One is market share. Uh, I think that's gonna take a hit. One is, and the other one is um, secondary market value. And I'm not sure where that's gonna go with SGC because I think maybe limiting the amount of for lack of a better term, crap cards that come in and come out, uh, that could actually put a little bit of upward pressure on prices. Um, whereas again, the, the whole paradigm shift and everybody moving to SGC and getting more used to the slabs and liking them and closing the gap, it was something I saw that was gonna happen over time. That part of the game is uh, has changed. So um, at first I was very disappointed, but then when I really started to think it out, like they had to do something. They had to either increase prices or do this. And I think the fact that they fell so far behind, they didn't, um, they weren't proactive enough in increasing prices soon enough. Um, I think they were forced to ultimately scratch their, um, their previous service levels and try something new. So give them some credit. Uh, PSA, again, increasing the prices of ultra modern and not announcing that in advance, very impromptu. Uh, I think PSA probably knew what they were doing and I think uh, PSA won this battle. Maybe not the war, but they won the battle. Speaking of PSA, I've got uh, two different submission orders that I'm gonna be showing off today. And um, the first one, it's a bunch of low end stuff. Well, it was low end, now it's mid end. It was low end when I submitted these cards back in November. 
Now, a lot of these cards are mid-end. Here's one example of that. The Topps Chrome Update Acuna. Really high gem rate on this one. This was hovering around like 35 or 40 bucks for a while. Of course, we all know what happened after January with a lot of these base rookie cards. So, really happy to get this. I think I picked this up for like 12 bucks in Mike O's auction. Check out Mike O. Next up, might have, yeah, I, I probably pack pulled this one. Devers 10, my first one. I've got some nines of his, so um, those top corners can be a little tough. Series one card, and I believe that's a different image from what he has in the complete set variation, so it makes this one actually pretty valuable, I think. Uh, might have some staying power in the hobby. And his Topps Chrome base card has done pretty well also. I got these Topps Heritage Sotos. I picked up a few lots of these and I submitted the best ones. So two for two on those. Not everybody's favorite pose, but I think, you know, once the people got, a lot of people got priced out of the Topps Update base PSA 10. So what's the next best thing? Well, that's debatable, but somewhere down the list is Topps Heritage. <laughs> And, uh, and those cards were pretty undervalued for a while because of that. We got this Jack Flaherty and a nine from series one. And I got a few more flagship cards. So we got this Brandon Woodruff. I think he might actually be pitching tonight for the Brewers. Gold, happy to hit that. And by the way, I'm gonna be planning on doing an auction, a live auction, my second one ever on this, uh, this channel. And if I plan it right, it'll be the night, one of the nights after, um, like a nightcap after the Hobby Palooza on either Friday or Saturday night. That would be July 31st or August 1st. So, and I'll be trying to sell most of these cards. Love Bueller, that's a nine. Got a Heritage Acuna and a 10. Got a Mother's Day Pink Lucas Sims um, I'm not really that high on this guy, but it's a parallel number to 50, so, and it's a rookie card, so I figured why not? Especially with the, uh, the old pricing structure, paying around like $9 a card, can't really go wrong. Got this Eloy, pack pulled this after the, uh, regional sports card show with Brian Roth and Amit and a few other YouTubers, Mike Sardella, um, we opened up a box of Series 2. We had all the, the the key rookies, which you'll see in this order. Got this. Uh, this was a cheap pickup from, I believe, a Mike O auction. Giovanni Urshela went from a utility player, super utility guy, um, into a very key contributor for the Yankees, offensively and defensively, to the point where Andujar didn't even... He wasn't even competing with a job, competing for him with a job because just his defense is so much better. And offensively, he's so good last year. Next up, uh, pick this one up after Eloy had a slow start, um, probably May of last year, maybe after he got injured. So I picked this up for about 20 bucks and happy to get this in a 10 gem mint grade. Never know when you're picking stuff up off of eBay, what it's really gonna look like when it comes in the mail had a good idea of the centering and the corners but you never know you never really know this is another one i picked up raw wasn't a huge pickup at the time maybe like 90 100 bucks but that 10 gives it quite the boost of course soto has trended upwards since uh gallery came out i picked this up right after gallery came out so I submitted two of these, and this is the second one to come back as a 10. So both copies, pretty nice card stock on gallery. Next up, more flagship, Albies 10. This is another card that has turned into a mid-end card from sort of a low-end card when I submitted it back in November. Got the Alonzo and a 10. This card might be a little um, undervalued right now, seeing what's happened to basically every other key flagship rookie. Um, PSA 9, Vlad, that's too bad. I think when I submitted it, I didn't remember the uh, that top left corner. I didn't remember two bad corners. I thought this had a better chance, but clearly it's accurately graded. Maybe even should be an eight and a half. And then we got a Tatis, 
and a 10. Nice to see that. Another Albies and a 10. And we got a Devers and a 9. Topps Chrome Base. This is from regular Topps Chrome. Showed you guys the Topps Chrome update. I think I pulled this from a blaster. Beautiful card. I guess this was a third Juan Soto Heritage. 10. And then I submitted another group of Topps Chrome Update HMT 55 Juan Sotos. These are selling for close to like 200 right now. Even after it was announced he had COVID, his prices went up even more. To be honest, I was kind of looking forward to a nice dip. I was happy, not happy he got COVID, but it didn't bother me from a cardboard perspective because I didn't plan on selling any of his stuff really this year. Um, any of his iconic rookie cards that I own that I don't have doubles of. And, uh, and I was hoping that these would maybe dip a little so I could buy some. Either these or the, probably the US 300s are the ones that I target right now just because of, if you look at the key rookie cards in years 2017 and later, or even 2016 and later, it seems like in a 10, the flagship card will outsell the Chrome Update card if both exist and if they both have the, um, the same image. Um, but yeah, so I got 10 10s. So this is my third best batch. This shows you how good the quality control was with Topps Chrome Update, maybe even Topps Chrome from this year. Um, I submitted three different batches of HMT 55 sodas, probably in total about 40, and I got 10s on all of them. That might not be saying much because the average, um, I think the average, the, the 10 rates around like 92% at least, maybe 95. I think with some car with some of those cards, like maybe Acuna, it's closer to 100, like 95 plus. And then these were the bangers, guys. Um, picked these up for 50, 60 bucks during the playoffs, ALDS or ALCS last year, so last October. And this was when the, uh, the Series 2 bet down Acuna was also fairly cheap, but it was starting to rise, I think, at that point. Cheap compared to today tell you that um maybe i saw a, i saw a buying opportunity because the acuna card started to approach a thousand that's when the braves are still in the playoffs so actually the acuna cards are probably pretty expensive then and i'm like oh wow this guy uh he's no slouch <laughs> glaber's a very very great young player even though that's horizontal that is has proven to be a key card for him all right and uh there was one other order this one, uh, Card Tech 710 Dane, he uh, actually was nice enough to give me a free vault. Pretty sweet, so I can like put slabs in here, or pickups when I go to a card show, fit easily in any backpack. Um, so thanks a lot, Dane, for that. Thanks a lot for doing this submission. And he submitted these cards, I think, around like uh, probably late January or something. And I got three out of four tens. First two cards of these Luis Arias autographs. Uh, a little surprise on the nine here. Um, I, I thought these were uh, these were gimme ten, so I'll have to look that one over a little bit. Sticker autographs, but that's okay. It's Topps Chrome update. Um, what's unfortunate about the the base autograph um, cards that you get from Topps Chrome update? A lot of the times that in, on eBay listings, people will advertise them as refractors, so you have to be careful there because. It's probably better to just get the base refractor that has no autograph because the base refractor that isn't autographed is numbered. These aren't numbered. Even though in eBay listings, people might call them refractors, they're really not, even though they are a little shinier. Um, as you can see, these aren't numbered, but you know, I paid about 20, 25 bucks and knowing that these were you know, base autographs, non-numbered, and uh, can't really go wrong, right? Louisa Rise. A lot of people expect big things from him this year. Um, some some of my friends have been comparing his swag to Juan Soto. I don't think I've actually seen footage of him playing um, during the the playoff stretch of last year. I didn't really watch many of the Twins Yankees games, and I know he put on a show, doubles show, laser show, as Pedroia would call it. Um, and from a batting average perspective, he's uh, he's quite quite fantastic. So. Be interesting to see what he can do this year. Super young, 22, 23. Next up, uh, so 
I broke, I think, three of these boxes, and I pulled this card in all three. Now, it says it's a short print, but I'm confused because why would I pull that same card three times? And I don't, I don't even think it was from the same case. So coincidence or not, I, I, I just don't, I don't get it. So if it's a short print, that's cool. If it's not, then that would make more sense. But Kristen Pache or Pash, um, he is a, a rising, wouldn't say star, but he's really improved his offense. He was kind of like a defense first guy, like really, really talented outfielder. And he's showing that he can swing the bat a bit too. He should make his debut, if not this year, uh, close to the beginning of next year, him and Drew Waters, especially with Mark Hakis out, right? Um, there's a chance that, and with a Puig trade falling through, there's a chance that one of those guys could really make a splash after the first like six days, because then they um, this year won't count as a full year of service time. So it's, it's prorated. Usually it's like the first, you know, they get called up after the first like two weeks for that service time thing. There's also another deadline that's super two that doesn't relate to control that has to do with arbitration um, that affects a subset of players. But uh, I think that there's a there's a pretty good chance a lot of a lot of these prospects, not not all of them, maybe not Juan or Franco, but the guys that were already in like double A, certainly triple A, that if this was a regular season and their team ex you know, plan to call them up in, in mid-April. I think those guys will get called up, hopefully after the first, like, six days of, of this season. So, and here's Alec Thomas. I pulled this one. Uh, I think he's, like, a top 100 prospect. Um, decent hitter. Um, still needs to develop quite a bit, but love these Heritage autographs. They just look so nice. And um, certain years, they're so subtle, we can hardly even tell. You just, like, skip right by them in a pack top certified autograph issue this one's a little bit more bold than some but uh that was cool all right so that is it for the psa reveal um again i will be part of the hobby palooza with uh, that that breaker culture is putting on and that is the weekend that the national would have fallen on so that's july 31st friday august 1st saturday august 2nd sunday I'm going to be going live 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, August 1st, I believe. Uh, so don't miss that. I've got a lot of things planned for that. And uh, Jeff Wilson, Sports Card Investor, is also putting on a, um, some sort of a, what, what's he calling it, like a sports, a virtual sports card con. Uh, you can go to his website to find out more about that, sportscardinvestor.com. And that should be really fun, too. All right, guys, uh, that is it for this video. Next video, we're going to be going Luis Robert hunting, pulling some Luis Robert fire, hopefully. I could sell these on eBay for about 65 bucks right now, but I don't want to. That's not fun. It's not worth it to me. I think we might be able to pull one Robert out of here. Might uh, almost pay for the break. All right, guys, take care. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully, you liked what you saw. Thank you so much for watching. Filming to that one.